Hi, Andrea. It's Julie. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yes. No, but when I logged in, it said that the listeners would be muted, and so I didn't know what to expect. Oh, no, we're good. And I am recording, just so you okay. know, and I'm doing this for your benefit, for you know, uh, business planning purposes, and also just so I have your permission, just in case um, I have a kind of a file of coaching calls that sometimes people want to do articles on coaching or something like that, so um, hopefully I have your permission. Okay. I'm not going to ask you anything overly personal, but for your benefit and mine, no, I like to do this now and then. Fine. Is that cool? Okay, of perfect. And yes, we'll send you a copy of the call. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, you know, okay. occasionally I'll do this. Um, so thanks for being flexible, and I will send you a copy of this okay. afterwards for business planning, et cetera, okay? okay? All right, cool. Okay. So first, oh, uh, I wanted to jump in. I did get your email about that marketing piece that someone sent you about the yes. card with the dogs, the reindeer or something. So what did you think yes. about that? That was kind of an interesting I piece of marketing. I thought it sounded a little fishy. Um, my initial reaction or my initial thoughts were that maybe mm -hmm. it was like in some way, shape, or form a realtor or another business person just doing something a little tricky. Um, mm -hmm. I just thought I've got nothing to lose by reaching out to them. So mm -hmm. I did. I've heard absolutely no response from it. It went nowhere. But that was my mm -hmm. thoughts. My thoughts were definitely sounded fishy. Like why, you know, I can understand a for sale right. by owner, um, but mm -hmm. a buyer, like <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Well, so, so really, and, and without doing a lot of research, they didn't give you a lot of breadcrumbs to find out who they really were. But this is essentially either an agent prospecting for their buyer, just in disguise kind of, um, or uh -huh, a uh -huh. buyer for real. I mean, it says I used Zillow in your property as a match, It, you know, now that we have everything online, there are buyers who are getting desperate because of your lack of inventory issue who will do stuff like this. There well, are buyers out there doing lots wanted of letters. inventory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so why did this go to you? Probably something fishy. It's hard to say. Um, but yeah. what so can we learn from that? The, you know. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, I you did look me. up the address on tax mm -hmm. records, and mm -hmm. um, it did match. Actually, it did not. They okay. were. Well, that's good. It didn't. Yeah. So I did that first, but still, it went nowhere. So what can I learn mm -hmm. from it? I don't know. <laughs> well, so if one thing is, we can see that there are whether it was an agent or a real buyer, this is a proactive approach to trying to identify property that may or may not already be on the market. And okay. since these pieces are floating around out there, and this is something that we teach you guys to do as well, we've done some radio shows and coaching calls on this how to find inventory where it doesn't seem like there is any. Now, you're saying, depending on the neighborhood and the price range, you do have inventory, but there's always buyers who are Me frustrated. Too. They feel like they're not seeing what's right for them. Right. So well, this is actually, a good example of one way it, to do about it. Yeah. Right. Oh, I was going to say, you know, in general, our area does – we actually have too much inventory. We're the complete opposite. However, mm -hmm. I live in a very unique, um, literally a one-street neighborhood, um, mm -hmm. where it's not out in the middle of nowhere, but we all have at least an acre. It's kind of like semi-country. So mm -hmm. now it mm -hmm. kind of makes sense. Maybe if they were looking in this specific area, like yeah. very small area, there's not a lot of inventory. So maybe that does Right. Sense. And she said, I'm looking for a half acre to two acre lot. So yes. Yes. that could be. Yes. So the lesson in this is when you have a buyer and you seem to be striking out for whatever reason, this is the type of proactive marketing stuff that you and I will put together, whether that's a wanted letter, a postcard, an ad, something like that. So I think it was good okay. that you saw that so that when we talk about those things, you, you know, it's nice for you to see that's for real people yes. who are doing this. And sometimes that creates yes. pocket listings and other things. So that's, that's just kind of a good little insight Perfect. for your overall real estate okay. brain. Is that cool? Okay. Sounds good. Absolutely. Right, good. So give me an update since we last spoke. What have you done to create more oh income my gosh. for yourself? <laughs> it has been amazing. It has been amazing. I'm not in any new transactions, but I had the best. You know what? Over the last two weeks, I would actually say I had the, last, the best last week. So mm -hmm. the first week after our last call, you know, it kind of just continued the way it was. I did an open house. I had, you know, absolutely nothing come out of it. It was just kind of just trotting along as I've been. Mm -hmm. And then this past week, I'm like a whole new person and a whole new, I mean, my phone is ringing. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. 
amazing, Julie. Um, I mean, I love assuming it, it continues to go this way, amazing. So I did a well, so who are these people and, making your phone ring, on yeah. Andrea? Who are yeah. who are? So, why is your phone ringing this week? What's going on with that? A couple of things. One, I switched up how I did my open house. Um, you know, I know you and I have talked in the past about handing out flyers, and I have. But just mm-hmm. looking back, when I used to go around a neighborhood, whether it's to drop off my marketing pieces or for an open house, one, let's just look at an open house and we'll focus on that. Mm-hmm. I would do maybe that street, maybe two if I was feeling extra adventurous, right? So not a ton mm-hmm. of homes. And I was like ashamed to be that salesperson walking around. I would kind of, I would try and like tiptoe up to the doorstep, hoping nobody would see me, that I could just drop my flyer like on the a door agent. and feel like I did it. Yes, totally. Mm-hmm. And this time, I don't know what, so that's how it would happen. And obviously, I got no results. This time, really, I was just, everything changed. I don't know what happened to me, but somehow I just got this huge, like, I can do it, right? This huge just mm-hmm. it felt amazing. I picked out, I printed out 200 flyers, mm-hmm. and I actually ran out of homes at 174. My feet had two wow. gigantic blisters. I mean, I earned it. Oh. <laughs> and, so you did, um, but look at how excited walked, you were and how much more confident you are. Totally. And it showed. I mean, I walked around that neighborhood going out of my way to say hello to everybody. Trying, like, I even gave the FedEx driver, I stopped him and gave him a flyer to invite him to my open house. I, I mean, it. I was, like, proud to do it. I was proud Good. to do it. And um, and then I just, you know, did other marketing as well. But I think that was the, the biggest one is mm-hmm. when my attitude, my confidence, and just actually mm-hmm. putting in the, the, you know, the sweat, like, doing it. I mean, my feet hurt. But I would do it over and over right. again if I got those same results. <laughs> it was worth the two blisters. <laughs> So, so your um, mindset I mean, every and five your confidence minutes. made the difference. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, and it showed when I actually did the open house. People came in, and I wasn't greeting them with a please sign in and just hoping that was my latch. I actually, like, made them want to talk to me. I was just a friendly, knowledgeable person who, why wouldn't they want to work with me? <laughs> I'm a good agent. Exactly. So, and it worked. I love how excited it you are and how confident you are I, in the results that you're getting. Oh my you gosh, actually and sound like someone who, imagine yeah. where I will be. Well, but Andrea, listen, <laughs> you actually sound like someone who is proud to be doing what you're doing for a living, and doesn't that naturally translate to me wanting to talk to you and ask you about real estate? Absolutely. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely. I love it. <laughs> so, good job. So, excellent, excellent job. Thank this you. Is so much better, and I love your excitement. So, talk to me about the conversations you had, the leads you have to follow up on, and where this is leading you. Yes. So, um, well, the conversations I had, you know, at least, well, just using that open house for an example, that wasn't quite all I Mm -hmm. did. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, I would just get to know them as a person. Instead of just making them sign in right away, I would just literally, how did you find my open house? Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for? How do you like this house? Of course I'm trying to sell that house. But if not, what are you looking for? When are you trying to buy? Do you have a home to buy first? You know, just and, like, I was just genuine about the way I asked it. Mm-hmm. It didn't sound too right. salesperson because my heart mm-hmm. was in the right place. I genuinely want to help them, and it showed. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so there is just how my conversations go. Um, mm-hmm. One of them actually wanted to write an offer on the house, and they have no buyer. Um, however, I connected them to my loan officer, and they were approved a little bit less than, actually significantly mm-hmm. less than what that house can go for. But um, the loan officer gave them advice to renegotiate her student loans, and it made a huge mm-hmm. difference. And in about two mm-hmm. weeks, they will qualify for that price, and they want that house. So if it's still available, I've already let the listing agent know that I have a buyer if it's still there in two weeks. Um, right. So Nice so job, that. Andrea. So, so, so at the minimum, you picked up a you. really good, closable future buyer that should write something on that house or something else in the next 30 days or less, correct? Absolutely, yes. And I already went to their apartment. They're the sweetest young couple. I already had a uh, pre-buying planning meeting at their apartment the very next day. So I closed that as the best as I could. I made them mine. I brought, Mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, I can come to you, you can come to me, but let's just meet tomorrow. (laughs) And they did. Perfect. So there's that. That's solid new fire within the next month. Okay, so Um, hold on to that thought for a second. Okay, Andrea, slow down. Take a breath. I love how excited you are. Okay, but let's look at it this way. 
they were a result of, did they come off of your flyers or did they just go to the open house on their own or what was the story? They actually saw the signs. They did. Okay. So as a yeah. result of this one open house that you had a total of probably four or five hours invested in, you for sure yeah. have them minimum and probably some more to follow up on, and they are going to spend how much money? Um, about three three thirty is what they're going to be pre approved for. Okay, so that's you know nine thousand dollars give or take in your pocket off of one right. hardcore day of work, right? Yes, I would do it every day. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's what we're working for. No bad at all. So I like to point that out right. so that when you have these great victories and you actually put that and monetize that in, in your brain. Now, you're going to have more than five or six hours because you've got to show them something, write the contract, et cetera. But still, all said, you're probably going to end up making, you know, four or 500 bucks an hour <laughs> by being this focused yeah. and this positive and this confident. So imagine what yeah. next year is going to be like. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm all right, good. So what else did you create toy. last week? You had a great week from what okay. it sounds like. I did. I did. Um, I, I let's see. I'm looking at my board here. I also had that couple from Hawaii. They were a Zillow lead, mm -hmm. but I followed your rules. Of, I literally reached out to them like 30 seconds and some clicking, and I couldn't reach them on their phone. They wouldn't, you know, I'm sure they were getting other agents too. They wouldn't answer their phone. So mm -hmm. I just went with the email, and then um, as I copied you on it, they ended up kind of doing an email interview with me, and mm -hmm. immediately, I mean, within an hour after sending them those answers, they um, had asked me, can we talk over the phone? <laughs> so there is my other mm -hmm. buying planning meeting. Since they're in Hawaii, I couldn't do it, you know, uh, in person. Mm -hmm. But we did do a full meeting, and um, mm -hmm. they are trying to come out here in December to look at homes. And um, they Excellent. are working with a lender, and they mm -hmm. already were talking. They already have another listing agent in mind. I tried to do you know, to connect them to one, but they already had one. Mm -hmm. And their market, I did get some information, you know, in our market, to write an mm -hmm. offer contingent upon selling your house isn't that great because our market isn't moving so fast. But right. hers is the complete opposite. She said her neighbor's mm -hmm. house sold before the very first open house is even over. So yeah. I will make sure that I communicate that to the listing agent when I go to write them an offer mm -hmm. that this is not like our area. This is solid. So, right. So, there's that. so when are they listing? Me. Are they listing their uh, their Hawaii house soon? Because that might sell before yes. they even make it to see you in December. Right. In fact, she is. Um, she was going to speak with a listing agent clearly who has the local knowledge more than I do, mm -hmm. um, because she's actually afraid of it selling too fast. She has a complete opposite right. problem we have over here. Right. Um, so I did just let her know. You know, of course, speak with your agent. But in our area, you know, some ways around that are one, um, the easiest way to just do the rent back if you have to. Let mm -hmm. the new buyer know you might right. do the rent back for a little bit. Um, or the negotiate the, you know, you could always extend sure. the escrow, but I would rather do a rent back so that it's at least a closed done deal and then just rent. Right. So she that's is perfect. Gonna work so that, that, that yeah, good. Good. That's that. Okay, so what I was going to say is that may be the fly in the ointment. You might want to talk to that listing agent if that creates any issues. And the interesting thing, Andrea, I have to say, your knowledge of how to put that type of a deal together does not sound like it's coming from a newer agent. <laughs> you oh, know, awesome. so I mean, it's amazing the difference between talking to you now and when we first started to uh, coaching together. Know. You know, you've already built up a really good level of confidence and knowledge, and you're already sounding like somebody who does a lot of business. So. You know, I feel that's it. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you sound like it. it. Is. So that's great. So okay, excited. so we got the yeah. What well, so we have the open house buyer? We have the Hawaii couple. Who else is in the next yes. sixty days or less? Are we ready for this? Okay, yeah. and then um, I just yesterday sent. Um, it's actually my childhood. Best. It's just my childhood best friend work coworker from the past who I met one time about a year ago at my friend's birthday dinner. I just sat next to her and we became right. Facebook friends that day. I've never talked to her since then, never liked any of her I mean I've never interacted with her. And she just sent yeah. me a private message the other day um saying, We short sold in two thousand eleven and we're ready to buy again. Can you help us? <laughs> so naturally I said yeah. of course, where would you like to meet and when? So um, I did show her because she actually mm -hmm. reached out on a particular property, and I know, mm -hmm. I just know, just because of the personal connection, she's not going to, you know, 
cheat on me by any means with another realtor. So I did break our rule, and I showed her one house, and my thought process there, um, it actually, mm -hmm. I knew from talking to her, it wasn't going to be a house that she would want to jump on, and I knew she wasn't pre-approved yet. Um, but I wanted right. to give her a taste of the home buying process. I wanted to get her excited, so I went and I showed her one home because it's an area that she loves, and it wasn't too far off from what she's looking mm -hmm. for. So I just thought right. that that was a really good way to just start a taste of it, make her, because she was debating, do we buy now or wait another year? And so I wanted to get her in a house. No, I so think I that did. I went with it. It went not, really well. She wasn't that random anyway. You had another connection to her. So exactly. that probably makes sense. Exactly. So that's good. Um, so she is, as we speak today, they are working on the pre-approval application with my loan officer. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And okay, we'll so that, that should goes. be 60 days away, right? That. I sure hope so. Well, the only thing is um, because the short sale, you can get yeah. an SHA loan within three years, the conventional in four, and I know that they wanted to do conventional. So it's not a done deal yet, but, I mean, I can't force them to get a loan that they don't want, you know? Right. So um, well, I can, I'm doing everything in my strategies. power. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay, so, yeah. any so other it's buyer not, It's not a for sure deal. I did. Yeah. Um, what? last one. It feels so good. Um, okay, okay, wait. Re re um, recalibrate. Got... Andrea, Andrea, Andrea. You are tracking these on your wipe off boards, correct? I am. I'm looking at my board as I talk to you. Okay, good. Excellent. I just You have a lot going on. I want to make sure we keep the train on the track. So good. So tell me about this yeah. next one. No, every one of these people has their own file that I have. Um, I have a um, communication sheet on. So I know like if I promise mm -hmm. them something, I write it down. And then I do. Okay. I have them all on my whiteboard. So we are good. Mm -hmm. um, the nice last job. one is uh, not so hot lead, but they don't have an agent and they're ready to buy, so they're going to be mine. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a, I think it was a Craigslist. It was one of my flyers with the 866 number, um, but she mm -hmm. didn't call the 866 number. She called my phone number, and I didn't pass out the flyers for the first open house, which is the house that she, remember I said the first one wasn't that good, it was the second one. Right. And mm -hmm. so, but I did market it on Craigslist. So I think, mm -hmm. just tracking it, tracking it down, I think it was a Craigslist lead. Um, but I'm not positive okay. on that one. Gotcha. Yeah. And why is but she anyway, less so she of a good buyer? Me, well, because I haven't been able to convert her yet. Um, I've called her mm -hmm. back twice gotcha. now. Um, so the first time she called me on a particular property, it's listed at 530, and it's one of our own listings. Uh, in fact, one mm -hmm. of our agents owns it. It's her personal house. Mm -hmm. um, who loves me and says if I have a buyer, I'm her. So I <laughs> think we're good. Mm -hmm. um, but so she called me on a particular property. I tried to get her at the property to show it. Um, and her husband was at the airport that day, so she said, well, let me call you back. I need to coordinate with my husband. Um, so I never heard back from her, so I called her the next day and said, I just want to let you know mm -hmm. there is no offers on the channel. If you want to show it, I can make this happen. You let me know your availability. I'm trying to work out my calendar. And she mm -hmm. said, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I've been working, and I haven't had a chance to talk to my husband. But because the first okay. time he was at the airport, I think he traveled or something. It sounds pretty legit. Mm -hmm. I just had to keep on them. Okay. But I do know the that they rent lead follow and that they don't yep. have – I think they're just kind of looky loos but they're renters, and any mm -hmm. renter <laughs> I'm right. determined to turn okay. into a buyer. So, yeah, so they're not a you know a triple A lead, but I'm determined to put them there. You're in hot right. pursuit. That's good. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Yes. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, I also, what about any, go ahead. okay, go ahead. Well, I wanted to ask about listing leads because these are all buyer leads. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You read my mind. Um, so as I've already had this talk with my husband, that's funny. As excited as I am for all these leads, mm -hmm. I know that it's not the track I need to be on. I do. I know that I'm going to keep doing my wheels and chasing, chasing, chasing. I know I need those listings, and I don't have any listing leads right now. Um, the one mm -hmm. listing lead that I have <clears throat> from my buyer who's in contract, which that one is really hanging by the thread, it's really struggling, Fine, mm -hmm. just for the loan reasons, loan purposes. Um, but mm -hmm. her husband, the house that they're divorcing with, she still hasn't listed it with anybody. And I've reached out mm -hmm. to him and I get no response, which is typical of him. But I thought when he wasn't responding that he must have listed with another agent. He hasn't. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if he's not paying his mortgage and just letting it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But and that's does she not know? She's not helpful. Uh -huh. She's not helpful at all. <laughs> does he <laughs> have your pre-listing package? 
No. Well, he and I met at his property, but but remember the thing is, is he's not, um, he doesn't care. So when I met him in person and I tried, you know, having that talk with him, he didn't care. He didn't care. So I don't think that in this case the pre-listing packet will help because that shows that okay. you're going to market your property and, not, and he just doesn't care. And hmm. she's not on that house. She doesn't own it with him. Well, so it sounds um, kind of so, flaky to me. I think you give him a couple more calls, tell him you're there for him, and then we'll call it not a lead because he's not responding mm-hmm. like a normal seller responds. Yes. But to answer your question as far as – so that one, you know, it's there, but I'm not really count. Like I'm going to try, right. but I don't, I'm yeah. not counting on that one. Um, Mm -hmm. But I know I need listing leads, and one of the things, you know, that from day one you and I have been working on is the expires. Um, Mm -hmm. I've been too nervous to actually – well, there's a lot. Most of them actually are on the do not call list, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But if I'm being completely honest with you, there are some that are not on the do not call list. Mm -hmm. And I just not 100%. Right. So so I've been Well, but I don't know, Andrea. You're in jail every day. Yeah. Well, okay, so mailing is okay, but why does mailing sometimes not work on expireds? Because well, the best expireds do a whole what? Bunch of other things. Yeah. The best and remember expired. our discussion, the best expireds will relist within three days of expiring, best meaning the most motivated because they know they're expiring okay. and they're already setting up appointments. So I'm not against you okay. mailing and emailing and doing what you have to do, but the best stuff will relist right away. And there is not a do not knock list. Right. And, and right there's, there, you also do have where we some the phone wall. numbers. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay, I so do. I, and I that's need, one thing. Stay with me. I need the butt-kicking, excited, confident Andrea who does the canvassing around open houses, who got almost 200 flyers out and got good results. I need that Andrea going to expireds. Okay. What are so, your thoughts on that? Um, I'm writing this on my board. I'm just following you. Um, you know what? Because I it's think, the same girl, right? <laughs> I know, it's I know. You. And I think what I don't know why listings are so much more intimidating than buyers. I think it's because I've done buyers before. I know them, you know, well. And I've only had two listings, <laughs> and I've never had well, a listing. Well, but Andrea, here's the ever. thing: what when you had your very first buyer? that was not maybe super, you know, center of influence, best friend type. Were you nervous yes. about your first buyer or two? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. I don't really so, remember, you know, I'm sure. Right, because I you know. have a lot more buyer experience now than listing experience. Why do you feel, right. if I were to ask you, why is it that not every agent you know is a great listing agent? Why is that? Um. Probably they're just too afraid to go get the leads. I mean, if you think about it, the transaction is the same. Every document that I now give, I would just receive and the other way around. Mm-hmm. So really the transaction is the same. It's right. probably even easier to run a listing than it is for the buyers. It is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, understand it. Why I'm so nervous. So you do know. You do. Well, so it, part of it is because it's fear of the unknown. It's different. You haven't done it a b- bunch of times like you have buyers. Okay, so let's let's get clear on what may be causing your nerves and, and put you know take the gorilla out of the room so to speak. So first is fear of the unknown. Second is that buyers are naturally more excited than sellers because buyers are getting something. Sellers are giving up something. Right. Okay, right. not just the house but also the commission. The buyers you know their commission does not come out of their pocket. Right. Yes. Okay. So it's different. We're talking about real money here. Next is because it requires real skill. You have to be able to handle some objections and be able to price property correctly and actually have a relationship. Yep. And, ha- and you are literally in contract with that seller. Most of you guys don't get in contract with the buyers, mm-hmm. technically, you know, as far as a buyer agency contract. So right. remember no, that buyer work is physical labor for the most part. You're driving around. You're getting into lockboxes. You're walking around. You're driving around, showing them, and then you write the contract. And yes, it does take skill, and you have to know how to negotiate, which you're good at. But being a listing agent is more mental work than physical work, because you kind of have to be one step ahead and strategize and be willing to compete and answer questions and kind of stick your neck out and maybe even hear no. 
See, when a buyer yeah. says no, generally they're saying no to a house, don't like the house. When a seller says no, they might Not be saying me. no to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So somewhere so there's a in your subconscious. Fear, that personal rejection. Yeah. Right. But here's the thing. They, if you experience that, we need to find out why that is. And if it's something logical, we'll build it into enhancing your pre-listing package, making your scripts better, getting you better at objection handling, et cetera. Okay. Or sometimes if it's just a lead, they're rejecting the situation, not you. They're just not ready to sell yet. So we have to sort all right. these things out. And this is why listing agents generally make more money than buyer's agents because look at it this way. Would you rather have 10 listings or 10 buyers? If you're looking at your schedule. Oh, my gosh, 10, 10 listings. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> well, a million reasons. I'm not it, – it's – the number one is with a buyer you just don't know. I mean, you can drive them around for 10 different days, and they might never buy. <laughs> they right. might never buy. Mm -hmm. um, a listing, I guess it's not 100% guaranteed, but you know that's not going to happen, right? You're not going to drive them around sometimes and Probably. have them never buy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like if you if you win over a new buyer, it's mm -hmm. not um, how I work this. You didn't have to earn it that hard. It's not it's not that hard to win over a new buyer, but it is for a listing. You have to actually go through the interview process and the listing. And right. I feel like by the time they've listed with you, they just have so much more respect for you, and I'm sure that goes mm -hmm. far. So like with yeah. these buyers who actually interviewed me, I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. I appreciated it yeah. because well, I knew that sure. they weren't just picking any agent. I felt honored. Mm -hmm. Like wow, after all those questions, you chose me, and so I I would love mm -hmm. that in the listing side of it. Does that make sense? Well, yes. So you understand completely what the process is, and you've got a lot of the mental work worked out. Now we just have to get you out there and get some experience so that you feel as confident with listings as you do with buyers.